The culture of India refers collectively to the thousands of distinct and unique cultures of all religions and communities present in India. India S languages, religions, dance, music, architecture, food, and customs differ from place to place within the country. Indian culture, often labelled as an amalgamation of several cultures, spans across the Indian subcontinent and has been influenced by a history that is several millennia old. Many elements of India S. Diverse cultures, such as Indian religions, philosophy, cuisine, languages, martial arts, dance, music, and movies, have a profound impact across the Indosphere, Greater India, and the world. Culture Indian origin religions include Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism, and Hinduism, all of which are based on the concept of Dharma and Karma. Ahimsa, a philosophy of nonviolence, is an important aspect of native Indian faiths whose most well-known proponent was Gandhi who through civil disobedience brought India together against the British Raj and this philosophy further inspired Martin Luther King Jr. during the American Civil Rights Movement. Indian origin religions have been persecuted by for centuries. Muslim rulers massacred Hindus and Buddhists while attacking temples and monasteries, while also forcing them to convert including on the battlefield. Most of the great temples in North India were destroyed during the Muslim rule. Muhammadan conquest of India is probably the bloodiest story in history. Consequently between the years 1000 AD and 1500 AD, the population of the Indian subcontinent decreased from 200 to 125 million. Foreign origin religion, including Abrahamic religions, such as Judaism, Christianity and Islam, are also present in India, as well as Zoroastrianism and Baha. I faith both escaping persecution by Islam have also found shelter in India over the centuries. India has 29 states with different culture and civilizations and one of the most populated countries in the world. The Indian culture, often labeled as an amalgamation of several various cultures, spans across the Indian subcontinent and has been influenced and shaped by a history that is several thousand years old. Throughout the history of India, Indian culture has been heavily influenced by Dharmic religions. They have been credited with shaping much of Indian philosophy, literature, architecture, art and music. Greater India was the historical extent of Indian culture beyond the Indian subcontinent. This particularly concerns the spread of Hinduism, Buddhism, architecture, administration and writing system from India to other parts of Asia through the Silk Road by the travellers and maritime traders during the early centuries of the Common Era. To the west, Greater India overlaps with Greater Persia in the Hindu Kush and Pamir Mountains. Over the centuries, there has been significant fusion of cultures between Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, Jains, Sikhs, and various tribal populations in India. India is the birthplace of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, and other religions. They are collectively known as Indian religions. Indian religions are a major form of world religions along with Abrahamic ones. Today, Hinduism and Buddhism are the world. S third and fourth largest religions respectively, with over 2 billion followers altogether, and possibly as many as 2.5 or 2.6 billion followers. Followers of Indian religions, Hindus, Sikhs, Jains and Buddhists make up around 80-82% population of India. India is one of the most religiously and ethnically diverse nations in the world, with some of the most deeply religious societies and cultures. Religion plays a central and definitive role in the life of many of its people. Although India is a secular Hindu-majority country, it has a large Muslim population. Except for Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Mizoram and Lakshadweep, Hindus form the predominant population in all 29 states and seven union territories. Muslims are present throughout India, with large populations in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Maharashtra, Kerala, Telangana, West Bengal and Assam, while only Jammu and Kashmir and Lakshadweep have majority Muslim populations. Sikhs and Christians are other significant minorities of India. According to the 2011 census, 79.8% of the population of India practice Hinduism. 
Islam 14.2%, Christianity 2.3%, Sikhism 1.7%, Buddhism 0.7% and Jainism 0.4% are the other major religions followed by the people of India. Many tribal religions, such as Sarnaism, are found in India, though these have been affected by major religions such as Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam and Christianity. Jainism, Zoroastrianism, Judaism, and the Baha'i faith are also influential but their numbers are smaller. Atheism and agnostics also have visible influence in India, along with a self-ascribed tolerance to other faiths. According to a study conducted by the Pew Research Center, India will have world's largest populations of Hindus and Muslims by 2050. India is expected to have about 311 million Muslims making up around 19-20% of the population and yet about 1.3 billion Hindus are projected to live in India comprising around 76% of the population. Atheism and agnosticism have a long history in India and flourished within Sramana movement. The Karvaka school originated in India around the 6th century BCE. It is one of the earliest form of materialistic and atheistic movement in ancient India. Sramana, Buddhism, Jainism, Ahivika and some schools of Hinduism consider atheism to be valid and reject the concept of creator deity, ritualism and superstitions. India has produced some notable atheist politicians and social reformers. According to the 2012 Win Gallup Global Index of Religion and Atheism Report, 81% of Indians were religious, 13% were not religious, 3% were convinced atheists, and 3% were unsure or did not respond. Topic: <laughs> Philosophy. Topic: Indian philosophy comprises the philosophical traditions of the Indian subcontinent. There are six schools of orthodox Hindu philosophy Naya, Vaisheshika, Samkhya, Yoga, Mimamsa, and Vedanta and four heterodox schools Jain, Buddhist, Ahivika, and Karvaka. Last two are also schools of Hinduism. However, there are other methods of classification. Vidyarania, for instance, identifies 16 schools of Indian philosophy by including those that belong to the Saiva and Rezasvara traditions. Since medieval India CA schools of Indian philosophical thought have been classified by the Brahmanical tradition as either orthodox or non-orthodox astika or nastika, depending on whether they regard the Vedas as an infallible source of knowledge. The main schools of Indian philosophy were formalized chiefly between 1000 BCE to the early centuries of the Common Era. According to philosopher Sarvpali Radhakrishnan, the earliest of these, which date back to the composition of the Upanishads in the later Vedic period 1000 to 500 BCE, constitute the earliest philosophical compositions of the world. Competition and integration between the various schools was intense during their formative years, especially between 800 BCE and 200 CE. Some schools like Jainism, Buddhism, Saiva and Advaita Vedanta survived, but others, like Samkhya and Ahivika, did not, they were either assimilated or became extinct. Subsequent centuries produced commentaries and reformulations continuing up to as late as the 20th century. Authors who gave contemporary meaning to traditional philosophies include Srimad Rachandra, Swami Vivekananda, Ram Mohan Roy, and Swami Dayananda Saraswati. Topic. Family structure and marriage Topic. For generations, India has a prevailing tradition of the joint family system. It is when extended members of a family, parents, children, the children's spouses and their offspring, etc. live together. Usually, the oldest male member is the head in the joint Indian family system. He mostly makes all important decisions and rules, and other family members are likely to abide by them. In a 1966 study, Orenstein and Micklin analyzed India's population data and family structure. Their studies suggest that Indian household sizes had remained similar over the 1911 to 1951 period. Thereafter, with urbanization and economic development, India has witnessed a breakup of traditional joint family into more nuclear-like families. 
Sinha, in his book, after summarizing the numerous sociological studies done on Indian family, notes that over the last 60 years, the cultural trend in most parts of India has been an accelerated change from joint family to nuclear families, much like population trends in other parts of the world. The traditionally large joint family in India, in the 1990s, accounted for a small percent of Indian households, and on average had lower per capita household income. He finds that joint family still persists in some areas and in certain conditions, in part due cultural traditions and in part due to practical factors. Youth in lower socio-economic classes are more inclined to spend time with their families than their peers due to differing ideologies in rural and urban parenting. With the spread of education and growth of economics, the traditional joint family system is breaking down rapidly across India and attitudes towards working women have changed. Topic. Arranged marriage Topic. Arranged marriages have long been the norm in Indian society. Even today, the majority of Indians have their marriages planned by their parents and other respected family members. In the past, the age of marriage was young. The average age of marriage for women in India has increased to 21 years, according to 2011 Census of India. In 2009, about 7% of women got married before the age of 18. In most of the marriages, the bride's family provide a dowry to the bridegroom. Traditionally, the dowry was considered a woman's share of the family wealth, since a daughter had no legal claim on her natal family's real estate. It also typically included portable valuables such as jewelry and household goods that a bride could control throughout her life. Historically, in most families the inheritance of family estates passed down the male line. Since 1956, Indian laws treat males and females as equal in matters of inheritance without a legal will. Indians are increasingly using a legal will for inheritance and property succession, with about 20% using a legal will by 2004. In India, the divorce rate is low—1% compared with about 40% in the United States. These statistics do not reflect a complete picture, though. There is a dearth of scientific surveys or studies on Indian marriages where the perspectives of both husbands and wives were solicited in depth. Sample surveys suggest the issues with marriages in India are similar to trends observed elsewhere in the world. The divorce rates are rising in India. Urban divorce rates are much higher. Women initiate about 80% of divorces in India. Opinion is divided over what the phenomenon means, for traditionalists the rising numbers portend the breakdown of society while, for some modernists, they speak of a healthy new empowerment for women. Recent studies suggest that Indian culture is trending away from traditional arranged marriages. Banerjee et al. surveyed 41,554 households across 33 states and union territories in India in 2005. They find that the marriage trends in India are similar to trends observed over last 40 years in China, Japan and other nations. The study found that fewer marriages are purely arranged without consent and that the majority of surveyed Indian marriages are arranged with consent. The percentage of self-arranged marriages called love marriages in India were also increasing, particularly in the urban parts of India. Topic. Wedding rituals. Topic. Weddings are festive occasions in India with extensive decorations, colors, music, dance, costumes and rituals that depend on the religion of the bride and the groom, as well as their preferences. The nation celebrates about 10 million weddings per year, of which over 80% are Hindu weddings. While there are many festival-related rituals in Hinduism, Vivaha wedding is the most extensive personal ritual an adult Hindu undertakes in his or her life. Typical Hindu families spend significant effort and financial resources to prepare and celebrate weddings. The rituals and process of a Hindu wedding vary depending on region of India, local adaptations, resources of the family and preferences of the bride and the groom. Nevertheless, there are a few key rituals common in Hindu weddings, Kanyadan, Panagrahana, and Saptapati. These are respectively, gifting away of daughter by the father, voluntarily holding hand near the fire to signify impending union, and taking seven steps before fire with each step including a set of mutual vows. After the seventh step and vows of Saptapati, the couple is legally husband and wife. Sikhs get married through a ceremony called Anand Karaj. The couple walk around the holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib four times. 
Indian Muslims celebrate a traditional Islamic wedding following customs similar to those practiced in the Middle East. The rituals include nikah, payment of financial dower called mar by the groom to the bride, signing of marriage contract, and a reception. Indian Christian weddings follow customs similar to those practiced in the Christian countries in the West in states like Goa but have more Indian customs in other states. Festivals. Topic. India, being a multicultural, multi-ethnic and multi-religious society, celebrates holidays and festivals of various religions. The three national holidays in India, the Independence Day, the Republic Day and the Gandhi Janti, are celebrated with zeal and enthusiasm across India. In addition, many Indian states and regions have local festivals depending on prevalent religious and linguistic demographics. Popular religious festivals include the Hindu festivals of Navratri, Janmashtami, Diwali, Maha Shivratri, Ganesh Chaturthi, Durga Puja, Holi, Rath Yatra, Ugadi, Onam, Vasant Panchami, Rakshabandhan, and Dussehra. Several harvest festivals such as Makar Sankranti, Sorai, Pusna, Hornbill, Chapchar Kut, Pongal and Raja Sankaranti swinging festival are also fairly popular. Indian New Year festival are celebrated in different part of India with unique style in different times. Ugadi, Bihu, Gudi Padwa, Puthandu, Vaisakhi, Pahela Boishak, Vishu and Vishuva Sankranti are the New Year festival of different part of India. Certain festivals in India are celebrated by multiple religions. Notable examples include Diwali, which is celebrated by Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, and Jains across the country and Buddha Purnima, Krishna Janmashtami, Ambedkar Janti celebrated by Buddhists and Hindus. Sikh festivals, such as Guru Nanak Janti, Basaki are celebrated with full fanfare by Sikhs and Hindus of Punjab and Delhi where the two communities together form an overwhelming majority of the population. Adding colors to the culture of India, the Dree festival is one of the tribal festivals of India celebrated by the Apatanis of the Zero Valley of Arunachal Pradesh, which is the easternmost state of India. Nowruz is the most important festival among the Parsi community of India. Islam in India is the second largest religion with over 172 million Muslims, according to India's 2011 census. The Islamic festivals which are observed and are declared public holiday in India are, Eid ul-Fitr, Eid ul-Adha Bakri Eid, Malad un nabi Muharram and shab e barat Some of the Indian states have declared regional holidays for the particular regional popular festivals, such as Arba, Een, Jammu Atul Wida and shab e qadr Christianity is India's third largest religion. With over 23 million Christians, of which 17 million are Roman Catholics, India is home to many Christian festivals. The country celebrates Christmas and Good Friday as public holidays, regional and community fairs are also common festival in India. For example, Pushkar Fair of Rajasthan is one of the world's largest markets of cattle and livestock. Greetings Topic. Indian greetings are based on Anali Mudra, including Pranama and Puja. Greetings include Namaste Hindi and Sanskrit, Namaskar Hindi, Juhar, Namaskar in Odia, Namaskar Marathi, Namaskara Kannada, Namaskaram Telugu, Malayalam, Vanakam Tamil, Nomashkar Bengali, Nomaskar Assamese, Aadab Urdu, and Sat Shri Akal Punjabi. All these are common spoken greetings or salutations when people meet, and are forms of farewell when they depart. Namaskar is considered slightly more formal than Namaste but both express deep respect. Namaskar is commonly used in India and Nepal by Hindus, Jains and Buddhists, and many continue to use this outside the Indian subcontinent. In Indian and Nepali culture, the word is spoken at the beginning of written or verbal communication. However, the same hands folded gesture may be made wordlessly or said without the folded hand gesture. The word is derived from Sanskrit nama, to bow, reverential salutation, and respect, and te, to you. Taken literally, it means, I bow to you. In Hinduism it means, I bow to the divine in you. In most Indian families, younger men and women are taught to seek the blessing of their elders by everentially bowing to their elders. This custom is known as pranama. 
Other greetings include J Jagannath used in Odia, Ami Ashi used in Bengali, J Shri Krishna in Gujarati and the Braj Bhasha and Rajasthani dialects of Hindi, Ram Ram, J Sita Ram G Awadi and Bhojpuri dialects of Hindi and other Bihari dialects, and Sat Shri Akal Punjabi, used by followers of Sikhism, as Salamu Alaikum Urdu, used by follower of Islam, J Janendra a common greeting used by followers of Jainism, J Bim used by followers of Ambedkarism, Namo Buddha used by followers of Buddhism, Allah of Ho used by followers of Baha'i, Shalom Alaikum used by followers of Judaism, Hamaz or Hama Ashobd used by followers of Zoroastrianism, Saheb G Persian and Gujarati used by the Parsi people, Dorud Persian and Gujarati used by the Irani people, Om Nama Shivaya, J Bolanath used in Dagri and Kashmiri, also used in the city of Varanasi, J Ambi Ma, J Mata D used in eastern India, J Ganapati Bapa used in Marathi and Konkani, and etc. These traditional forms of greeting may be absent in the world of business and in India's urban environment, where a handshake is a common form of greeting. Animals The varied and rich wildlife of India has had a profound impact on the region's popular culture. Common name for wilderness in India is jungle which was adopted by the British colonialists to the English language. The word has been also made famous in the Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. India S. Wildlife has been the subject of numerous other tales and fables, such as the Panchatantra and the Jataka tales. In Hinduism, the cow is regarded as a symbol of ahimsa, non violence, mother goddess, and bringer of good fortune and wealth. For this reason, cows are revered in Hindu culture, and feeding a cow is seen as an act of worship. This is why beef remains a taboo food in mainstream Hindu and Jain society. As of January 2012, cow remains a divisive and controversial topic in India. Several states of India have passed laws to protect cows, while many states have no restrictions on the production and consumption of beef. Some groups oppose the butchering of cows, while other secular groups argue that what kind of meat one eats ought to be a matter of personal choice in a democracy. Madhya Pradesh enacted a law in January 2012, namely the Gau Vanch Vad Pratishad Act, which makes cow slaughter a serious offence. Gujarat, a western state of India, has the Animal Preservation Act, enacted in October 2011, that prohibits killing of cows along with buying, selling and transport of beef. In contrast, Odisha, Assam and Andhra Pradesh allow butchering of cattle with a fit for slaughter certificate. In the states of West Bengal and Kerala, consumption of beef is not deemed an offence. Contrary to stereotypes, a sizable number of Hindus eat beef, and many argue that their scriptures, such as Vedic and Upanishadic texts do not prohibit its consumption. In southern Indian state Kerala, for instance, beef accounts for nearly half of all meat consumed by all communities, including Hindus. Sociologists theorize that the widespread consumption of cow meat in India is because it is a far cheaper source of animal protein for the poor than mutton or chicken, which retail at double the price. For these reasons, India's beef consumption post-independence in 1947 has witnessed a much faster growth than any other kind of meat. Currently, India is one of the five largest producer and consumer of cattle livestock meat in the world. A beef ban has been made in Maharashtra and other states as of 2015. While states such as Madhya Pradesh are passing local laws to prevent cruelty to cows, other Indians are arguing. If the real objective is to prevent cruelty to animals, then why single out the cow when hundreds of other animals are maltreated? Cuisine Indian food is as diverse as India. Indian cuisines use numerous ingredients, deploy a wide range of food preparation styles, cooking techniques and culinary presentation. From salads to sauces, from vegetarian to meat, from spices to sensuous, from breads to desserts, Indian cuisine is invariably complex. Harold McGee, a favorite of many Michelin-starred chefs, writes, For sheer inventiveness with milk itself as the primary ingredient, no country on earth can match India. I travel to India at least three to four times a year. It's always inspirational. There is so much to learn from India because each and every state is a country by itself and each has its own cuisine. There are lots of things to learn about the different cuisines, it just amazes me. 
I keep my mind open and like to explore different places and pick up different influences as I go along. I don. T actually think that there is a single state in India that I haven't visited. Indian food is a cosmopolitan cuisine that has so many ingredients. I don't think any cuisine in the world has got so many influences the way that Indian food has. It is a very rich cuisine and is very varied. Every region in the world has their own sense of how Indian food should be perceived. It takes me back to the first Christmas I can remember, when the grandmother I hadn't yet met, who was Indian and lived in England, sent me a box. For me it still carries the taste of strangeness and confusion and wonder. According to Sanjeev Kapoor, a member of Singapore Airlines' International Culinary Panel, Indian food has long been an expression of world cuisine. Kapoor claims, if you looked back in India's history and study the food that our ancestors ate, you will notice how much attention was paid to the planning and cooking of a meal. Great thought was given to the texture and taste of each dish. One such historical record is Manasalasa, Sanskrit, Manasalasa the Delight of Mind, written in the 12th century. The book describes the need to change cuisine and food with seasons, various methods of cooking, the best blend of flavors, the feel of various foods, planning and style of dining amongst other things. India is known for its love of food and spices. Indian cuisine varies from region to region, reflecting the local produce, cultural diversity, and varied demographics of the country. Generally, Indian cuisine can be split into five categories, northern, southern, eastern, western, and northeastern. The diversity of Indian cuisine is characterized by the differing use of many spices and herbs, a wide assortment of recipes and cooking techniques. Though a significant portion of Indian food is vegetarian, many Indian dishes also include meats like chicken, mutton, beef both cow and buffalo, pork and fish, egg and other seafood. Fish-based cuisines are common in eastern states of India, particularly West Bengal and the western state of Kerala. Despite this diversity, some unifying threads emerge. Varied uses of spices are an integral part of certain food preparations and are used to enhance the flavor of a dish and create unique flavors and aromas. Cuisine across India has also been influenced by various cultural groups that entered India throughout history, such as the Central Asians, Arabs, Mughals, and European colonists. Sweets are also very popular among Indians, particularly in Bengal where both Bengali Hindus and Bengali Muslims distribute sweets to mark joyous occasions. Indian cuisine is one of the most popular cuisines across the globe. In most Indian restaurants outside India, the menu does not do justice to the enormous variety of Indian cuisine available. The most common cuisine served on the menu would be Punjabi cuisine. Chicken tikka masala is a very popular dish in the United Kingdom. There do exist some restaurants serving cuisines from other regions of India, although these are few and far between. Historically, Indian spices and herbs were one of the most sought-after trade commodities. The spice trade between India and Europe led to the rise and dominance of Arab traders to such an extent that European explorers, such as Vasco da Gama and Christopher Columbus, set out to find new trade routes with India leading to the Age of Discovery. The popularity of curry, which originated in India, across Asia has often led to the dish being labeled as the Pan Asian dish. Regional Indian cuisine continues to evolve. A fusion of East Asian and Western cooking methods with traditional cuisines, along with regional adaptations of fast food, are prominent in major Indian cities. The cuisine of Telangana consists of the Telugu cuisine, of the Telugu people, as well as Hyderabadi cuisine, also known as Nizami cuisine, of the Hyderabadi Muslim community. Hyderabadi food is based heavily on non-vegetarian ingredients while, Telugu food is a mix of both vegetarian and non-vegetarian ingredients. Telugu food is rich in spices and chilies are abundantly used. The food also generally tends to be more on the tangy side with tamarind and lime juice both used liberally as souring agents. Rice is the staple food of Telugu people. Starch is consumed with a variety of curries and lentil soups or broths. Vegetarian and non-vegetarian foods are both popular. Hyderabadi cuisine includes popular delicacies such as biryani, halim, bagara bangan and keema, while Hyderabadi day-to-day -day dishes see some commonalities with Telanganite Telugu food, with its use of tamarind, rice, and lentils, along with meat. Yogurt is a common addition to meals, as a way of tempering spiciness. Clothing. 
Traditional clothing in India greatly varies across different parts of the country and is influenced by local culture, geography, climate and rural, urban settings. Popular styles of dress include draped garments such as sari and mekila sador for women and dhoti or lungi or panche in Kannada for men. Stitched clothes are also popular such as churidar or salwar kameez for women, with dipata long scarf thrown over shoulder completing the outfit. Salwar is often loose-fitting, while churidar is a tighter cut. The dastar, a headgear worn by Sikhs is common in Punjab. Indian women perfect their sense of charm and fashion with makeup and ornaments. Bindi, mahendi, earrings, bangles and other jewellery are common. On special occasions, such as marriage ceremonies and festivals, women may wear cheerful colours with various ornaments made with gold, silver or other regional stones and gems. Bindi is often an essential part of a Hindu woman's makeup. Worn on their forehead, some consider the bindi as an auspicious mark. Traditionally, the red bindi was worn only by married Hindu women, and colored bindi was worn by single women, but now all colors and glitter has become a part of women's fashion. Some women wear sindor, a traditional red or orange red powder vermilion in the parting of their hair locally called mang. Sindor is the traditional mark of a married woman for Hindus. Single Hindu women do not wear sindor, neither do over one million Indian women from religions other than Hindu and agnostics, atheists who may be married. The makeup and clothing styles differ regionally between the Hindu groups, and also by climate or religion, with Christians preferring Western and Muslim preferring the Arabic styles. For men, stitched versions include kurta pajama and European-style trousers and shirts. In urban and semi-urban centers, men and women of all religious backgrounds, can often be seen in jeans, trousers, shirts, suits, kurtas and variety of other fashions. <laughs> <laughs> Languages and literature <laughs> History the Sanskrit language, whatever be its antiquity, is of a wonderful structure, more perfect than the Greek, more copious than the Latin, and more exquisitely refined than either, yet bearing to both of them a stronger affinity, both in the roots of verbs and the forms of grammar, than could possibly have been produced by accident, so strong indeed, that no philologer could examine them all three, without believing them to have sprung from some common source, which, perhaps, no longer exists. There is a similar reason, though not quite so forcible, for supposing that both the Gothic and the Celtic, though blended with a very different idiom, had the same origin with the Sanskrit. The Rigvedic Sanskrit is one of the oldest attestations of any Indo-Aryan languages, and one of the earliest attested members of the Indo-European languages. The discovery of Sanskrit by early European explorers of India led to the development of comparative philology. The scholars of the 18th century were struck by the far-reaching similarity of Sanskrit, both in grammar and vocabulary, to the classical languages of Europe. Intensive scientific studies that followed have established that Sanskrit and many Indian derivative languages belong to the family which includes English, German, French, Italian, Spanish, Celtic, Greek, Baltic, Armenian, Persian, Tocharian and other Indo-European languages. Tamil, one of India's major classical language, descends from Proto-Dravidian languages spoken around the 3rd millennium BCE in peninsular India. The earliest inscriptions of Tamil have been found on pottery dating back to 500 BC. Tamil literature has existed for over 2,000 years and the earliest epigraphic records found date from around the 3rd century BCE. The evolution of language within India may be distinguished over three periods, Old, Middle and Modern Indo-Aryan. The classical form of Old Indo-Aryan was Sanskrit meaning polished, cultivated and correct, in distinction to Prakrit, the practical language of the migrating masses evolving without concern to proper pronunciation or grammar, the structure of language changing as those masses mingled, settled new lands and adopted words from people of other native languages. Prakrita became Middle Indo-Aryan leading to Pali the language of early Buddhists and Ashoka era in 200-300 BCE, Prakrit the language of Jain philosophers and Apabramsa the language blend at the final stage of Middle Indo-Aryan. It is Apabramsa, scholars claim, that flowered into Hindi, Gujarati, Bengali, Marathi, Punjabi and many other languages now in use in India's north, east and west. All of these Indian languages have roots and structure similar to Sanskrit, to each other and to other Indo-European languages. 
Thus we have in India 3,000 years of continuous linguistic history recorded and preserved in literary documents. This enables scholars to follow language evolution and observe how, by changes hardly noticeable from generation to generation, an original language alters into descendant languages that are now barely recognizable as the same. Sanskrit has had a profound impact on the languages and literature of India. Hindi, India's most spoken language, is a Sanskritized register of the Kariboli dialect. In addition, all modern Indo-Aryan languages, Munda languages and Dravidian languages, have borrowed many words either directly from Sanskrit Tatsama words, or indirectly via Middle Indo-Aryan languages Tadbhava words. Words originating in Sanskrit are estimated to constitute roughly 50% of the vocabulary of modern Indo-Aryan languages, and the literary forms of Dravidian Telugu, Malayalam and Kannada. Tamil, although to a slightly smaller extent, has also been significantly influenced by Sanskrit, part of the Eastern Indo Aryan languages. The Bengali language arose from the Eastern Middle Indic languages and its roots are traced to the 5th century BCE Ardhamagadhi language, another major classical Dravidian language. Kannada is attested epigraphically from the mid 1st millennium AD, and literary Old Kannada flourished in the 9th to 10th century Rashtrakuta dynasty. Pre-Old Kannada or Purava Hazi Ganada was the language of Banavasi in the early Common Era, the Satavahana and Kadamba periods and hence has a history of over 2,000 years. The Ashoka Rock Edict found at Brahmagiri dated 230 BCE has been suggested to contain a word in identifiable Kannada, Odia is India. S sixth classical language in addition to Sanskrit, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam. It is also one of the 22 official languages in the 8th schedule of Indian constitution. Oriya's importance to Indian culture, from ancient times, is evidenced by its presence in Ashoka's Rock Edict X, dated to be from 2nd century BC. In addition to Indo European and Dravidian languages, Austro Asiatic and Tibeto Burman languages are in use in India. The 2011 Linguistic Survey of India states that India has over 780 languages and 66 different scripts, with its state of Arunachal Pradesh with 90 languages. Epics The Mahabharata and the Ramayana are the oldest preserved and well-known epics of India. Versions have been adopted as the epics of Southeast Asian countries like Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia and Indonesia. The Ramayana consists of 24,000 verses in seven books and 500 cantos and tells the story of Rama an incarnation or avatar of the Hindu preserver god Vishnu, whose wife Sita is abducted by the demon king of Lanka, Ravana. This epic played a pivotal role in establishing the role of Dharma as a principal ideal guiding force for Hindu way of life. The earliest parts of the Mahabharata text date to 400 BC and is estimated to have reached its final form by the early Gupta period c. 4th century AD. Other regional variations of these, as well as unrelated epics include the Tamil Ramavataram, Kannada Pampa Bharata, Hindi Ramacharitamanasa, and Malayalam Adhyadmaramayanam. In addition to these two great Indian epics, there are the five great epics of Tamil literature composed in classical Tamil language. Manamegalai, Savaka Sintamani, Salapadikaram, Vilayapathi and Kundalakesi. Topic: <laughs> Performing Arts. Topic: Topic: Dance. Topic: Let drama and dance, Natya, Natya be the fifth Vedic scripture. Combined with an epic story, tending to virtue, wealth, joy and spiritual freedom, it must contain the significance of every scripture, and forward every art. India has had a long romance with the art of dance. The Hindu Sanskrit texts Natyasastra science of dance and Abhinaya Darpana mirror of gesture are estimated to be from 200 BCE to early centuries of the 1st millennium CE. The Indian art of dance is taught in these ancient books, according to Ragini Devi, is the expression of inner beauty and the divine in man. It is a deliberate art, nothing is left to chance, each gesture seeks to communicate the ideas, each facial expression the emotions. Indian dance includes eight classical dance forms, many in narrative forms with mythological elements. 
The eight classical forms accorded classical dance status by India's National Academy of Music, Dance, and Drama are, Bharatanatyam of the state of Tamil Nadu, Kathak of Uttar Pradesh, Kathakali and Mohiniyattam of Kerala, Kuchipudi of Andhra Pradesh, Yakshagana of Karnataka, Manipuri of Manipur, Odissi Orissi of the state of Odisha and the Satriya of Assam. In addition to the formal arts of dance, Indian regions have a strong free form, folksy dance tradition. Some of the folk dances include the Bhangra of Punjab, the Bihu of Assam, the Zeliang of Nagaland, the Jumair, Domkach, Chow of Jharkhand, the Gumura dance, Gadapua, Mahari dance and Dalkai of Odisha, the Kayuwalas, Burhas and Charkulas of Uttar Pradesh, the Jat Jatin, Nat Natan and Satari of Bihar, the Gumar of Rajasthan and Haryana, the Dandia and Garba of Gujarat, the Kalatam of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, the Yakshagana of Karnataka, Lavani of Maharashtra, Dekni of Goa. Recent developments include adoption of international dance forms particularly in the urban centres of India, and the extension of Indian classical dance arts by the Kerala Christian community, to tell stories from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Drama and theatre Topic. Indian drama and theatre has a long history alongside its music and dance. Kalidasa S plays like Shakuntala and Megaduta are some of the older dramas, following those of Basa. Kutiyatam of Kerala, is the only surviving specimen of the ancient Sanskrit theatre, thought to have originated around the beginning of the Common Era, and is officially recognised by UNESCO as a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. It strictly follows the Natya Shastra. Natyacharya Mani Madhava Chakyar is credited for reviving the age-old drama tradition from extinction. He was known for mastery of Rasa Abhinaya. He started to perform the Kalidasa plays like Abhijñana Sakantala, Vikramorvasya and Malavikagnamitra, Basa's Swapnavasavadatta and Pancharatra, Harsha's Nagananda. Music. Topic. Music is an integral part of India's culture. Natyasastra, a 2,000-year-old Sanskrit text, describes five systems of taxonomy to classify musical instruments. One of these ancient Indian systems classifies musical instruments into four groups according to four primary sources of vibration, strings, membranes, cymbals, and air. According to Rhys Flora, this is similar to the Western theory of organology. Archaeologists have also reported the discovery of a 3,000-year-old, 20-key, carefully shaped polished basalt lithophone in the highlands of Odisha. The oldest preserved examples of Indian music are the melodies of the Samaveda 1000 BC that are still sung in certain Vedic srauta sacrifices, this is the earliest account of Indian musical hymns. It proposed a tonal structure consisting of seven notes, which were named, in descending order, as crushed, pratham, dwitiya, tritiya, chatarth, mandra and atishwar. These refer to the notes of a flute, which was the only fixed frequency instrument. The Samaveda, and other Hindu texts, heavily influenced India's classical music tradition, which is known today in two distinct styles, Carnatic and Hindustani music. Both the Carnatic music and Hindustani music systems are based on the melodic bass known as raga, sung to a rhythmic cycle known as tala. These principles were refined in the Natyasastra 200 BC and the Datilam 300 AD. The current music of India includes multiple varieties of religious, classical, folk, filmy, rock and pop music and dance. The appeal of traditional classical music and dance is on the rapid decline, especially among the younger generation. Prominent contemporary Indian musical forms included filmy and indie pop. Filmy refers to the wide range of music written and performed for mainstream Indian cinema, primarily Bollywood, and accounts for more than 70% of all music sales in the country. Indie pop is one of the most popular contemporary styles of Indian music which is either a fusion of Indian folk, classical or Sufi music with Western musical traditions. Topic. Visual arts. Topic. Topic. Painting Topic. Cave paintings from Ajanta, Bog, Alora, and Satanavasal and temple paintings testify to a love of naturalism. Most early and medieval art in India is Hindu, Buddhist or Jain. 
A freshly made colored floor design Rangoli is still a common sight outside the doorstep of many mostly South Indian, Indian homes. Raja Ravi Varma is one of the classical painters from medieval India. Patashitra, Madhubani painting, Mysore painting, Rajput painting, Tanjore painting and Mughal painting are some notable genres of Indian art, while Nandalal Bose, M. F. Hussain, S. H. Raza, Gita Vadera, Jamini Roy and B. Venkatapa are some modern painters. Among the present-day artists, Atul Dadia, Bose Krishnamaknari, Devajyothi Ray and Shibu Nadison represent a new era of Indian art where global art shows direct amalgamation with Indian classical styles. These recent artists have acquired international recognition. Jehangir Art Gallery in Mumbai, Mysore Palace has on display a few good Indian paintings. Topic. Sculpture Topic. The first sculptures in India date back to the Indus Valley Civilization, where stone and bronze figures have been discovered. Later, as Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism developed further, India produced some extremely intricate bronzes as well as temple carvings. Some huge shrines, such as the one at Ellora were not constructed by using blocks but carved out of solid rock. Sculptures produced in the northwest, in stucco, schist, or clay, display a very strong blend of Indian and classical Hellenistic or possibly even Greco-Roman influence. The pink sandstone sculptures of Mathura evolved almost simultaneously. During the Gupta period 4th to 6th centuries, sculpture reached a very high standard in execution and delicacy in modeling. These styles and others elsewhere in India evolved leading to classical Indian art that contributed to Buddhist and Hindu sculpture throughout Southeast Central and East Asia. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Architecture. Topic: Indian architecture encompasses a multitude of expressions over space and time, constantly absorbing new ideas. The result is an evolving range of architectural production that nonetheless retains a certain amount of continuity across history. Some of its earliest production are found in the Indus Valley Civilization BC, which is characterized by well-planned cities and houses. Religion and kingship do not seem to have played an important role in the planning and layout of these towns. During the period of the Mauryan and Gupta empires and their successors, several Buddhist architectural complexes, such as the caves of Ajanta and Ellora and the monumental Sanchi Stupa were built. Later on, South India produced several Hindu temples like Chenakasava Temple at Bailur, the Hoysalaswara Temple at Halabidu, and the Kesava Temple at Samanatapura, Briyadeyaswara Temple, Thanjavur built by Raja Raja Chola, the Sun Temple, Konark, Sri Ranganathaswami Temple at Sarangam, and the Buddha Stupa Chinalanha Dibba and Vikramarka Kota Dibba at Bhadipralu. Rajput kingdoms oversaw the construction of Kajuraho Temple Complex, Chitter Fort and Chatterbuj Temple, etc. during their reign. Angkor Wat, Borobudur and other Buddhist and Hindu temples indicate strong Indian influence on Southeast Asian architecture, as they are built in styles almost identical to traditional Indian religious buildings. The traditional system of Vasta Shastra serves as India's version of feng shui, influencing town planning, architecture, and ergonomics. It is unclear which system is older, but they contain certain similarities. Feng shui is more commonly used throughout the world. Though Vastu is conceptually similar to feng shui in that it also tries to harmonize the flow of energy, also called life force or prana in Sanskrit and kai, ki in Chinese, Japanese, through the house, it differs in the details, such as the exact directions in which various objects, rooms, materials, etc. are to be placed. With the advent of Islamic influence from the West, Indian architecture was adapted to allow the traditions of the new religion, creating the Indo-Islamic style of architecture. The Fatehpur Sikri, Taj Mahal, Gol Gumbas, Kutub Minar, Red Fort of Delhi and Charminar are creations of this era, and are often used as the stereotypical symbols of India. The colonial rule of the British Empire saw the development of Indo-Saracenic style, and mixing of several other styles, such as European Gothic. The Victoria Memorial and the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus are notable examples. Indian architecture has influenced Eastern and Southeastern Asia, due to the spread of Buddhism. A number of Indian architectural features such as the Temple Mound or Stupa, Temple Spire or Shikara, Temple Tower or Pagoda and Temple Gate or Torana, have become famous symbols of Asian culture, used extensively in East Asia and Southeast Asia. 
The central spire is also sometimes called a vimanam. The southern temple gate, or gopuram is noted for its intricacy and majesty. Contemporary Indian architecture is more cosmopolitan. Cities are extremely compact and densely populated. Mumbai's Nariman Point is famous for its Art Deco buildings. Recent creations such as the Lotus Temple, Golden Pagoda and Akshardham, and the various modern urban developments of India like Bhubaneswar and Chandigarh, are notable. <laughs> Sports and martial arts Sports Topic. Field hockey was considered to be the national game of India, but this has been recently denied by the Government of India, clarifying on a Right to Information Act RTI, filed that India has not declared any sport as the national game. At a time when it was especially popular, the India national field hockey team won the 1975 Men's Hockey World Cup, and eight gold, one silver, and two bronze medals at the Olympic Games. However, field hockey in India no longer has the following that it once did. Cricket is considered the most popular sport in India. The India national cricket team won the 1983 Cricket World Cup, the 2011 Cricket World Cup, the 2007 ICC World 2020, the 2013 ICC Champions Trophy and shared the 2002 ICC Champions Trophy with Sri Lanka. Domestic competitions include the Ranji Trophy, the Duleep Trophy, the Deodar Trophy, the Irani Trophy and the Challenger Series. In addition, BCCI conducts the Indian Premier League, a 2020 competition. Football is popular in the Indian state of West Bengal. The city of Kolkata is the home to the largest stadium in India, and the second largest stadium in the world by capacity, Salt Lake Stadium. The city of Joy is a centre of football activity in India and is home to top national clubs such as Mohan Bagan AC, Kingfisher East Bengal FC, Prayag United SC, and the Mohammedan Sporting Club. Chess is commonly believed to have originated in northwestern India during the Gupta Empire, where its early form in the 6th century was known as Chaturanga. Other games which originated in India and continue to remain popular in wide parts of northern India include Kabaddi, Gilly Danda, and Ko Ko. Traditional southern Indian games include Snake Boat Race and Kuttayam Kolam. In 2011, India inaugurated a privately built Bood International Circuit, its first motor racing circuit. The 5.14 km circuit is in Greater Noida, Uttar Pradesh, near Delhi. The first Formula One Indian Grand Prix event was hosted here in October 2011. Indian martial arts One of the best known forms of ancient Indian martial arts is the Kalarapayattu from Kerala. This ancient fighting style originated in southern India in the 12th century BCE and is regarded as one of the oldest surviving martial arts. In this form martial arts, various stages of physical training include Ayurvedic massage with sesame oil to impart suppleness to the body a series of sharp body movements so as to gain control over various parts of the body and, complex sword fighting techniques palayankam, salambam, which was developed around 200 AD, traces its roots to the Sangam period in southern India. Salambam is unique among Indian martial arts because it uses complex footwork techniques kaladi, including a variety of spinning styles. A bamboo staff is used as the main weapon. The ancient Tamil Sangam literature mentions that between 400 BCE and 600 CE, soldiers from southern India received special martial arts training which revolved primarily around the use of spear vel, sword vel, and shield kadaham. .Among eastern states, Pika Akada is a martial art found in Odisha. Pika Akada, or Pika Akara, roughly translates as warrior gymnasium or warrior school. In ancient times, these were training schools of the peasant militia. Today's Pika Akada teach physical exercises and martial arts in addition to the Pika dance, a performance art with rhythmic movements and weapons being hit in time to the drum. It incorporates acrobatic maneuvers and use of the khanda, straight sword, pada, gauntlet sword, sticks, and other weapons. In northern India, the Musti Yutta evolved in 1100 AD and focused on mental, physical and spiritual training. In addition, the Donner Veda tradition was an influential fighting art style which considered the bow and the arrow to be the supreme weapons. 
The Donner Veda was first described in the 5th century BCE Visnu Purana and is also mentioned in both of the major ancient Indian epics, the Ramayana and Mahabharata. A distinctive factor of Indian martial arts is the heavy emphasis laid on meditation dhyana as a tool to remove fear, doubt and anxiety. Indian martial arts techniques have had a profound impact on other martial arts styles across Asia. The 3rd century BCE Yoga Sutras of Patanjali taught how to meditate single-mindedly on points located inside one's body, which was later used in martial arts, while various mudra finger movements were taught in Yogacara Buddhism. These elements of yoga, as well as finger movements in the Nada dances, were later incorporated into various martial arts. According to some historical accounts, the South Indian Buddhist monk Bodhidharma was one of the main founders of the Shaolin Kung Fu. Topic. Popular media Topic. Topic. Television Topic. Indian television started off in 1959 in New Delhi with tests for educational telecasts. Indian small screen programming started off in the mid-1970s. At that time there was only one national channel Doordarshan, which was government-owned. 1982 saw revolution in TV programming in India, with the New Delhi Asian Games, India saw the colour version of TV, that year. The Ramayana and Mahabharat were some among the popular television series produced. By the late 1980s more and more people started to own television sets. Though there was a single channel, television programming had reached saturation. Hence the government opened up another channel which had part national programming and part regional. This channel was known as DD2 later DD Metro. Both channels were broadcast terrestrially. In 1991, the government liberated its markets, opening them up to cable television. Since then, there has been a spurt in the number of channels available. Today, Indian small screen is a huge industry by itself, and has thousands of programs in all the states of India. The small screen has produced numerous celebrities of their own kind some even attaining national fame for themselves. TV soaps are extremely popular with housewives as well as working women, and even men of all kinds. Some lesser known actors have found success in Bollywood. Indian TV now has many of the same channels as Western TV, including stations such as Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, HBO, FX, and MTV India. Topic. Cinema Topic. Bollywood is the informal name given to the popular Mumbai-based film industry in India. Bollywood and the other major cinematic hubs in Bengali cinema, Oriya film industry, Assamese, Kannada, Malayalam, Marathi, Tamil, Punjabi and Telugu constitute the broader Indian film industry, whose output is considered to be the largest in the world in terms of number of films produced and number of tickets sold. India has produced many cinema makers like Satyajit Ray, Rinal Sen, J. C. Daniel, Kasinathuni Viswanath, Ram Gopal Varma, Bapu, Ritwik Ghatak, Guru Dutt, K. V. Svanat, Adore Gopalakrishnan, Shaji N. Karun, Gurish Kasaravali, Shikhar Kapoor, Harishikesh Mukherjee, Nagraj Manjul, Shyam Benegal, Shankar Nag, Gurish Karnad, G. V. Iyer, Mani Ratnam, and K. Balachander see also, Indian film directors. With the opening up of the economy in recent years and consequent exposure to world cinema, audience tastes have been changing. In addition, multiplexes have mushroomed in most cities, changing the revenue patterns. Topic. Perceptions of Indian culture Topic. India's diversity has inspired many writers to pen their perceptions of the country culture. These writings paint a complex and often conflicting picture of the culture of India. India is one of the most ethnically and religiously diverse countries in the world. The concept of Indian culture is a very complex and complicated matter. Indian citizens are divided into various ethnic, religious, caste, linguistic and regional groups, making the realities of Indianus extremely complicated. This is why the conception of Indian identity poses certain difficulties and presupposes a series of assumptions about what concisely the expression, Indian, means. 
However, despite this vast and heterogeneous composition, the creation of some sort of typical or shared Indian culture results from some inherent internal forces such as a robust constitution, universal adult franchise, flexible federal structure, secular educational policy, etc. and from certain historical events such as Indian independence movement, partition, wars against Pakistan, etc. According to industry consultant Eugene M. Makar, for example, traditional Indian culture is defined by a relatively strict social hierarchy. He also mentions that from an early age, children are reminded of their roles and places in society. This is reinforced, Makar notes, by the way many believe gods and spirits have an integral and functional role in determining their life. Several differences such as religion divide the culture. However, a far more powerful division is the traditional Hindu bifurcation into non-polluting and polluting occupations. Strict social taboos have governed these groups for thousands of years, claims Makar. In recent years, particularly in cities, some of these lines have blurred and sometimes even disappeared. He writes important family relations extend as far as one gatra, the mainly patrilinear lineage or clan assigned to a Hindu at birth. In rural areas and sometimes in urban areas as well, it is common that three or four generations of the family live under the same roof. The patriarch often resolves family issues, others have a different perception of Indian culture. According to an interview with C.K. Prahalid by Day Dearlove, author of many best-selling business books, modern India is a country of very diverse cultures with many languages, religions and traditions. Children begin by coping and learning to accept and assimilate in this diversity. Prahalit, who was born in India and grew up there, claimed, in the interview, that Indians, like everyone else in the world, want to be treated as unique, as individuals, want to express themselves and seek innovation. In another report, Nancy Lockwood of Society for Human Resource Management, the world's largest human resources association with members in 140 countries, writes that in the past two decades or so, social change in India is in dramatic contrast to the expectations from traditional Indian culture. These changes have led to Indian families giving education opportunities to girls, accepting women working outside home, pursuing a career, and opening the possibility for women to attain managerial roles in corporate India. Lockwood claims that change is slow, yet the scale of cultural change can be sensed from the fact that of India's 397 million workers, 124 million are now women. The issues in India with women empowerment are similar to those elsewhere in the world. According to Amartya Sen, the India born Nobel laureate in economics, the culture of modern India is a complex blend of its historical traditions, influences from the effects of colonialism over centuries, and current Western culture, both collaterally and dialectically. Sen observes that external images of India in the West often tend to emphasize the difference, real or imagined, between India and the West. There is a considerable inclination in the Western countries to distance and highlight the differences in Indian culture from the mainstream of Western traditions, rather than discover and show similarities. Western writers and media usually misses, in important ways, crucial aspects of Indian culture and traditions. The deep-seated heterogeneity of Indian traditions, in different parts of India, is neglected in these homogenized description of India. The perceptions of Indian culture, by those who weren't born and raised in India, tend to be one of at least three categories, writes Sen, exoticist approach, it concentrates on the wondrous aspects of the culture of India. The focus of this approach of understanding Indian culture is to present the different, the strange and as Hegel put it, a country that has existed for millennia in the imaginations of the Europeans, magisterial approach, it assumes a sense of superiority and guardianship necessary to deal with India, a country that James Mill's imperialist history thought of as grotesquely primitive culture. While great many British observers did not agree with such views of India, and some non-British ones did, it is an approach that contributes to some confusion about the culture of India. Curatorial approach, it attempts to observe, classify and record the diversity of Indian culture in different parts of India. The curators do not look only for the strange, are not weighed by political priorities, and tend to be more free from stereotypes. The curatorial approach, nevertheless, have an inclination to see Indian culture as more special and extraordinarily interesting than it actually may be. The curatorial approach, one inspired by systematic curiosity for the cultural diversity of India within India, is mostly absent. Susan Bailey, in her book, observes that there is considerable dispute in India and Orientalist scholars on perceived Indian culture. 
She acknowledges that many dispute claims of pervasiveness of caste and strict social hierarchy in modern India. Bailey notes that much of the Indian subcontinent was populated by people for whom the formal distinctions of caste and strict social hierarchies were of only limited importance in their lifestyles. According to Rosser, an American sociologist, Americans of South Asian origins feel the Western perception of the culture of India has numerous stereotypes. Rosser notes that the discourse in much of the United States about the culture of India is rarely devoted to independent India. People quickly make sweeping and flawed metaphysical assumptions about its religion and culture, but are far more circumspect when evaluating civil society and political culture in modern India. It is as if the value of South Asia resides only in its ancient contributions to human knowledge whereas its pathetic attempts to modernize or develop are to be winked at and patronized. Rosser conducted numerous interviews and summarized the comments. The study reports a stark contrast between Western perceptions of the culture of India, versus the direct experience of the interviewed people. For example, The presentation of South Asians is a standard pedagogic approach which runs quickly from the cradle of civilization, contrasting the Indus Valley with Egypt and Mesopotamia, on past the Aryans, who were somehow our ancestors, to the poverty-stricken, superstitious, polytheistic, caste-ridden Hindu way of life, and then somehow magically culminates with a eulogy of Mahatma Gandhi. A typical textbook trope presents the standard ancient India meets the age of expansion approach with a color photo of the Taj Mahal. There may be a side bar on a himsa or a chart of connecting circles graphically explaining samsara and reincarnation, or illustrations of the four stages of life or the four noble truths. Amid the dearth of real information there may be found an entire page dedicated to a deity such as Indra or Varuna, who admittedly are rather obscure vis-a-vis -vis the beliefs of most modern Hindus. See also References Topic. Bibliography Topic. Topic. External links Topic. Ministry of Culture, Government of India, links to some cultural sites and available grants for understanding the cultural diversity of India India and World Cultural Heritage A UNESCO site describing cultural heritage sites of India India's Intangible Cultural Heritage Another UNESCO site dedicated to Indian dance and other cultural heritage.